Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to share a new art journaling tutorial with some new and old products from Finnebar. As a Finnebar ambassador, I am joining a challenge this month. This is a challenge that we have every month and my friend Rika is the one that is posted the challenge on our Facebook group and it's basically to create something using gel and that it has the theme of time. So I figured that I wanted to create an art journal because I am so into art journaling right now. And I'm using this new craft art journal from Finnebar. And the reason why I wanted to use it is because I really wanted to create a journal on craft paper. I haven't done that in a long time and I thought that would be a really cool thing to do and a nice challenge for myself. So I grabbed a couple of older stamps from Finnebar because I really wanted to create some kind of pattern in the background before I add anything on top of it. So I'm getting my archival link and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically stamp these in the background. Now they're not going to be like very even and I don't mind that they're not even because what I want is to create kind of a distressed background. So and this uh, this is from the Art Daily collection. It's called Dream Without Fear. And just want to kind of add it in different places and the reason why is because once I add something like gel it will look really cool if I have um, stuff kind of sticking underneath so the circles are kind of making this pattern in the background I could also use some of the circles that are like freehand here Oops, that is maybe I should turn it around. Not that it matters if it's upside down, but I just think it looks better. I'm a very um, geometrical person. So I'm going to fill the whole background with basically circles. Oh, I like this moon one. And I guess it's easier to stamp one stamp than a few. And I'm just grabbing the different circles that are in here. I'm going to basically fill the whole page i might just do other things as well this one looks cool looks like the moon okay and i think this looks really cool as well there we go so now i have this really cool circular background that i can work with now i really wanted to kind of add a little bit of script not sure I have any more space for it now my idea was to add script onto this but I will just see if it works mm, you can really not you can't really see it I uh, maybe I'll just fill the pieces in between the circles with some script but truthfully now that I did this one I am NOT looking I don't really need this one anymore so I mean I wanted to use this one because it looks cool but I'm not going to now because of it so that is very very neat and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my new stencil I'm going to get the new stencil from Finnebar this is called Mind Games it's one of my favorite ones and I'm going to use the 3D gel on top of it what's going to happen is that you're going to see some circles in some areas and in some you will not if that makes sense at all now I'm using 3D gel this is a 3D matte gel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically add it to the background. Now let me line this up better maybe. Okay, I think this is good. What I like about the 3D gel is that you can use it with stencils because it creates, uh, it's thick enough that it can go, it won't run through. Now if you have a hard time working with this type of journal when it's, when there is like a, area here where it's harder to reach you can always remove the page this journal you can actually remove the page from it now when this gel is going to dry it's going to dry clear so you will just see a different type of background and it, what it does is it will create a resist to my background now you don't have to add it everywhere but the idea here is to create a really cool distressed background so that's what I'm doing right now 
There we go. Now let's remove this. Oh, the top here I haven't done. And just smooth it all out. Even if you missed a piece, it's not really a big deal. Oh, how cool is that? So there we go. Now it looks white. So it's going to give you a completely different impression than when it actually dries up. So I'm going to let this dry naturally because I do have to go run some errands. So when I come back, that will dry up clear and then I'll show you the next step. Make sure you really wash your stencil from all the gunk from the gel because otherwise it will dry like that permanently and you won't be able to use it. I'm also linking all the products below in the description area so you can go ahead if you want to purchase any of these. Okay, so this is actually almost fully dry. You can still see a little bit of the white, but I've grown impatient of waiting. I let it dry for a few hours and I even heat set it, but I guess this is pretty thick. So it doesn't really matter because it's dry to the touch. So I could add the next layer and then you will anyway see that it will dry up nicely. So I'm going to go back with the same stencil. But instead of putting it right the same way what I did before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over so it actually covers the area where I want the, the opposite of the area so what I have to do is I think I need to like kind of work with it this way because I need to move it to the left a little bit so it fits so there we go so you see I'm going to work with it like this and as I said you can remove the page if you, if, if you feel uncomfortable doing that you can remove it from the little wires so this is what I'm going to do. So I actually moved it across because what I want to do is I want to use paint on top of it. So I grabbed two paints, two metallic paints. This is the um, hazelnut and dragonfly. And I'm going to add them to the background with a little sponge dabber. This color, color is so beautiful. Both of these colors are just super, super gorgeous. Okay, so I some, have a small sponge dabber. And what I want to do is I want to kind of sponge the area where there's no gel to kind of cover it up. So I'm going to start with this one. And you have to be very careful because obviously the stencil is still raised a little bit. But I just want to do this. I'm holding it really tight. But if it goes underneath, that's okay as well. I'm not going to cover all of them with the same color. I'm going to kind of go around and use both colors. I'm starting with the dark one, which is the hazelnut. And let's see what I want. I want the one here and this one over here. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. And now I'm going to wash the sponge and use it with the other color. So now for the next color, I'm going to take a little bit of this dragonfly color. And, and mask it as well. So it's kind of adding a masked area to this. And since there's pattern on it, it looks really, really cool. This green color is beautiful. So now I'm going to lift it up and you have like kind of like a checkered pattern that is see-through in certain areas. So it looks like it was done like there you can still see the moons and the different things with it too. All right, now I'm going to let this dry so I can do the next layer. Once that's dry, I can actually go and create the checkered pattern. I mean, I'm freehanding it, but if you don't want to do that, then you can definitely use the stencil again. So this is how the checkered area will look. It almost looks like a checkered piece with like the different faces like a game. I just think it's pretty original. I don't think I was aiming for this, but I really like the way it turned out. Now I just want something like a focal point to add to this. I wanted to create a really cool focal point because I felt the background was so busy that it needed a very strong focal point. So I took an ATC craft paper from Finabar, a mechanical kind of cog that looked kind of like the sun of this one that I want to stamp on. I also found the same stamp, mini stamp, that is similar to the stencil and some archival link. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this right in the center because I want to use this for the focal point, which is the sun will be the focal point. 
use a stamp block if you don't stamp the way I'm not I don't know why I'm stamping like this I'm going to use this and cut it around there we go and just cut around it so this will be right here in the center and then I'm going to take another ATC and add this type of pattern to the background and it's not going to be an exact pattern this time I want it to kind of be more distressed there we go okay so there is this pattern and this is going to be sitting on top of it but before that I want to actually add string to it so what I'm going to do is kind of wrap it around this until I'm happy with the way it looks. And I'm going to just use a little bit of tape to hold this together since it's not going to be seen. So some masking tape just to hold it because that's going to be glued to the background so it's not going to be really seen uh, in the front. That's what I mean. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of 3D gel to the background so it basically holds it all together. There we go. Then I'm going to add it to this one. I want to glue this to the front as well. And just use this to distress the edges a little bit. Now when I bring this back, this is just going to be right here. And it will look really cool. I'm going to distress the edges on this one as well, just because I want it to match. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to glue this to the background. It will stick out a little bit, but that's okay. It's just... Then I can just take some word stickers from the sentiment collection. Time to create. I'll put a little bit of glue in the back so it actually sticks. I think it will be nice to put them here. So there's the theme of time. I use the gel medium. Time. So just want to add a little bit of gel just to hold this all together. It will dry up clear, of course. And then the last thing I want to do is bring a little bit of this Firebird color because it's just gorgeous. And just add it in some areas to just really pop it up so that's basically it I mean I didn't plan it to be this way I, it's weird sometimes how pages turn out not how you expect them but they turn out even better I had the idea of doing the masking with the gel with the stamps but then the rest of the page kind of took over and took a new life and I really like how it turned out and even if you're not happy with the way things turn out, because sometimes that happens to me. This one, halfway through, I thought I was not happy with it until I added the main embellishment. And if you are feeling that it's not good, just keep on trying and keep on like working with it until you find something that really makes it pop. And that's when you kind of have that aha moment that you know that things worked out. So I'm going to list all the products that I used today in the description area. I hope you get inspired by this video. And if you created something inspired by this video, please share it on social media and hashtag me and tag me. That way I can share the project with somebody else. As you can see, the gel is now fully dry. You don't see the white anymore, but you do see the stamped images of the moon and the different designs underneath. So that's why I thought it would be really cool to create this checkered kind of space. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and also visit Finnabar's channel. I'm sure you will love all the projects that are there as well. And if you haven't joined my Facebook group, I'd love for you to join Karen Tamir and Friends Creative Space. I would love to see what you create with an inspiration for either one of my projects, videos, or products. Thank you so much, everyone, and have an amazing day. Bye.